Okay, so what I'm going to do is just look at uh, a couple of things before we start. I'm going to send across the code to everyone so that they're able to join. Okay, without any further ado, I've just put the codes across to everyone, so they should be able to join this session. We are looking at, uh, good morning to everyone, thank you. Um, thanks for your confirmation. Uh, we're looking at starting learning outcome two today uh, in our unit, which is academic and research skills. Let me just bring up the unit specification so that all, all of you are able to see. So we started this unit off yesterday, which was primarily focused on understanding what are academic skills and what are research skills and why they are important specifically when we look at, you know, uh, starting our studies towards higher education uh, at level three. So this unit is focused on, you know, obviously helping you develop uh, study skills, check your and uh, assess your English language skills, your referencing skills, you know, skills which are, which can also be categorized as hard and soft skills, skills that you earn, or, you know, you gain through experience, work experience, qualifications, which is academic qualifications or vocational qualifications. And then we look at personal skills or attributes, which are going to be soft skills like communication skills, leadership skills, skills that allow you to work within a team. You're a good negotiator. So those are skills that we will say are soft skills. Now, in the first learning outcome, we essentially covered, uh, we did three things, in fact. One, we looked at why research is important in the health and social care sector, in the business sector. Why do we look at uh, developing our academic skills? Because they are useful for us at our workplace. Employers want what are called working skills or, uh, you know, um, skills which allow you to work effectively, work more productively within the organization. Now, in the first learning outcome, we looked at three aspects. First part was to look at doing a, a SWOT analysis. And that SWOT analysis basically meant that we were able to look at doing an English proficiency test. That English proficiency test on the British Isles website, you know, allows us to complete and get an assessment on our English speaking, listening, communication, and reading and writing aspects of, uh, you know, when we talk about academic writing. And the second part of that task we looked at was to do a SWOT analysis to understand what are our strengths and weaknesses opportunities and threats. Focused on strengths and weaknesses, so I provided a template. That template allows you to essentially look at carrying out your SWOT analysis, which is to find out what are your strengths, mostly professional strengths and weaknesses, which you feel are areas of development in terms of, say, for example, I might not have leadership quality or I might not have worked in the team. So you want to look at you know, these as weaknesses that you want to change into strengths over a point in time after doing a training, undertaking an activity, doing a few tasks, or, you know, getting mentoring and coaching from maybe seniors or other colleagues in the organization or at your place of work. And they will then help you allow to, you know, guide you. And then that will help you to develop those skills. So the idea was to look at, um, you know, completing that aspect. And in the third part, what we looked at was developing a plan which was a personal development plan. The reason of looking at developing a personal plan was to look at creating a working document, which allows us to, you know, continuously um, update, review, and monitor our progress on the skills that we are trying to acquire, the skills that we are, or areas of weakness that we are trying to improve on, or areas of strengths that we are trying to build on. So 
these three particular, uh, you know, uh, templates, which uh, were required to be completed, I have also dropped them on WhatsApp. And the reason of doing that was to try and also complete them because they would help you essentially also cover the part of the assignment which is required uh, to be done at a later stage. And one of the key things that I mentioned to every one of you during the session, the first session was that this particular unit that we look at is a unit which essentially requires us to do things. That means, as you can see, it is be able to. That means you have to demonstrate, you have to do this practically. And that is why, uh, you know, these templates have been created, which allow you to contextualize them. That means personalize them. And that should allow you to fill them up according to your areas of strengths, your areas of weaknesses, what, target, what targets you want to set to improve your weaknesses or threat areas. And then how do you put that into a bit of a plan that you're going to plan, monitor and review over the next six months, 12 months, 18 months, because some of the things that we might want to acquire might not be some uh, areas that we can immediately improve on. For example, language skills. For some of us, English is not the first language. So in order for us to improve language skills, we need to focus on grammar. We need to focus on tone of voice. We need to focus on vocabulary, building vocabulary. We need to focus on, you know, punctuations, sentences, uh, you know, comprehension, things like that. And that is where sometimes achieving some of these, uh, um, let's say, skills in terms, if I say, when I do my English assessment, which I'd requested all of you to do, and if you did that, and if your score came out to be A2 or B1, then you're looking at moving to the next level of proficiency. So A2 is like eight years of English, eight years of schooling English. B1 is like nine years of schooling English. B2 is like 10 years of GCSE equivalent English. And if you have C1 or C2, that means you have advanced level of English uh, in terms of speaking, listening, communication, reading, and writing. So there might be areas you might do well in your language skills in terms of speaking and listening, but you might need to do some work on reading and writing. And that is where you will need to then note down that these are my areas of weakness. I need to improve these. And what you would then do is in the personal development plan, which is the task one and one, you need to put it down in terms of an area of improvement. And for that, you need to undertake some activities. What could be those activities? Example of those activities given is, for example, I might attend an English lesson. I might uh, watch a, uh, you know, English movie. I might want to, you know, become a part of a group, a discussion group or a club wherein they speak English and, you know, exchange, um, you know, thoughts or, you know, have discussions on, uh, you know, say, for example, improving English or discussing about English culture and history. You might want to uh, look at improving your English by, um, you know, taking maybe classes. It could be also that you would want to improve your English wherein you want to build your vocabulary. So you might take the help of flashcards. And these are all the activities which you feel you can undertake would be mentioned in the personal development plan. And that would help accomplish, you know, the first part of the learning outcome, which is be able to assess your own academic and academic competence in, in, in a particular area. And then you have to do research. What research you have done? You've done an English test. You've also researched and done um, thought about it in terms of creating a SWOT analysis and then developed a smart target template to be able to uh, you know uh, decide what are the relevant targets for you, what are the targets or areas that you need improvement on. Now, in today's learning outcome, which is learning outcome two, it is telling us to do know about. That means it's a theoretical learning outcome. Here we are going to learn about how do we research information using primary and secondary methods. So this learning outcome has three assessment criteria, 2.1, 2.2, and 21, wherein we are going to be understanding how do you carry out research? What is the process through which we carry out research? How do we look at differentiating between different methods of research, primary research, secondary research, and tertiary research? and then what uh, you know constitutes good practice when we are trying to undertake some investigation or investigative studies in other words research to be able to uncover issues or problems that are being faced when you try and do some activities or day to day 
you know, discharge of your responsibilities. Now, in this learning outcome, we'll be looking at covering uh, this bit in terms of the indicative content in the unit, which is to understand what is primary research and what are the tools that we use to conduct primary research. Then we are also going to look at what is secondary research and what are the tools that we use or methodology, what are the methods, tools that we use, techniques that we use to be able to conduct secondary research. So for this, what we are going to do is do our discussion basis, you know, our presentation. And I will switch you over to that in a second. So feel free to ask me questions or any queries that you have. And the idea would be to try and, you know, discuss this in a bit more detail so that you are able to uh, have a good knowledge uh, and understanding of what the learning outcome to actually entails. So let me switch you over to the presentation. Right. So in order to look at, you know, understanding what is research and what are primary research, these are the bits that we have covered in terms of a recap, if I do, which I've done right now. So we've looked at our capability and our skills by doing a British Council IELTS test. And uh, this test that we have done basically allows us to understand our English proficiency skills. This was the link to the website. Then, uh, you know, we've also done what is called a SWOT analysis and then conducted what is called, you know, uh, uh, a personal or created a personal development plan. And these are some of the websites in which you can go on and improve further on your English. Now, before I start, what I want to be able to do essentially is basically show you a quick video. And this video that I'm going to play is primarily going to be uh, giving you an idea in terms of what is primary research and what is secondary research. So before we get into it, what we want to be able to do is understand what is, you know, primary research and what is secondary research. So this video is something which is a, quite a long video. What is primary research and what is secondary research? So I have kind of chosen this video and, uh, you know, this is something that you can watch at a later stage after the session offline, and that would help you understand what is primary and secondary research. Now, what I want to be able to do is do a bit of a, uh, you know, a test to see whether you, uh, I'm going to show you a few slides. And these slides that I show you are going to be looking at, uh, you know, and making you understand and asking you questions whether you see this as what is called, uh, you know, what do you see in this slide? Is this slide what is, uh, you know, showing you a particular picture? And in this picture, what I want you to see is and observe whether this particular picture, object, or, you know, any sort of an, uh, you know, website that I show you, what kind of data does this particular, uh, you know, picture depict? Is it primary data? Is it secondary data? Or is it, uh, you know, uh, tertiary data? Okay, let me do one quick thing before I get into it. Let me ask you a few questions. What is primary data or research? Have you heard about what is primary research or what is primary data? Anybody? So primary, when I say primary, what I mean by the word primary is that this is something which is original data. That means this is data collected firsthand by the researcher. That means when you, if I say that um, I'm going to go out and check the temperature, what is the temperature? I'm going to go out and step out of the classroom and see whether it's raining or not outside. Because you're going out yourself and checking whether it is raining or not, and because you're doing it firsthand, because you're not re relying on somebody, you're not asking somebody about it. What you're doing is you're stepping out and you're checking it out yourself. So that is why when we talk about primary data, that means something that you're going to originally see, do firsthand. And this kind of data, which is collected for the purposes of research, data which is collected by the investigator themselves or person who's undertaking the investigation, it is being collected for the first time and it is being collected from the start, then this will be classed as what is called primary data. Now, you're not relying on anybody in terms of 
information which is being provided, you are basically gathering it yourself. And that is why it will be primary data. Another example that I'll give you a primary data would be, imagine if you were driving to the office or driving to maybe, uh, you know, your place of work and you witnessed an accident which happened and because of which you were delayed reaching the office. So if you witness the accident yourself while driving to the to your office or your workplace, you are the first person with you. You are the person who is actually seeing it firsthand. That means it is something that you have seen happening in front of your own eyes. And when you talk about this to your colleagues in the office, and you tell them that you know the reason why I was delayed primarily was because um, you know I there was an accident while I was coming to the office, and because of which the traffic was held up. Now, any other person in your office which is listening to you describing what actually happened is actually hearing that from you. They were not present at that point in time when the accident happened. They were not on the road. They were not in their car. They were maybe somewhere else. And they are listening to you uh, and, uh, by, and trying to understand what is the reason why you were delayed or you know why this accident happened. So when we look at Primary data, you are assuming that you have seen it firsthand, you have collected it firsthand, you are getting it from the source. When I look at secondary data, secondary data tends to be, uh, secondary research or secondary data tends to be data which is primarily information that is already existing or an event which has already happened and you are listening to the activities or the series of those events when you are being told by somebody. And that would mean that is secondary data. So in second person, essentially. So if I look at opening BBC's website right now, if I just do it right now and show it to you, um, say, for example, and I'll shift you to the website. So let's look at this for a moment. So if I see this is the BBC website. So if I want to go to BBC News and I go into the news yesterday, I don't know how many of you have seen that um, one of the American, uh, sorry, British businessmen who is known to be, you know, somebody who's an adventurer, he boarded a sub which, and he wanted to go down and see the Titanic, which is at the ocean floor in Atlantic. Now that sub got missing. And obviously there are five people in that sub submarine. So when you see this, when you hear or when you read this news, breaking of this news, and as I can see, if I see it live, that I'm then this news is coming firsthand to me, and I'm I'm actually reading about it or I'm actually seeing about it. But if I get to hear this news from my friend, and it says, "Did you you know Did you know what happened yesterday? Did you get a chance to hear or see it on the television?" Now, what is happening is you are telling your friend about it and he's hearing it from you as a second source. So as you can see, if the news is breaking live and you're the first person hearing it or seeing it, then it is primary data. But if you hear it from somebody else, you read it in the newspaper, you see it, uh, you know, or read about it in a, or hear about it in a discussion with other people, once it has happened in the past, then in that stage, what will happen is that will become secondary data. So this is an important aspect that you should be able to differentiate between what constitutes primary data and what const or primary research and what constitutes secondary data or secondary research. And this is quite important because this will help you understand the various ways in which research can be carried out. Now, there is also something called tertiary data. Anybody has heard about tertiary data? So what is tertiary data? Any idea? So no, tertiary... Go on. Go on, sorry. Come again. I said, I don't know. All right, okay. It was, so it was tertiary, tertiary data... data. Right. Tertiary data is a date type of data which has already been collected, compiled, analyzed, and then it is also being used by a third party. So this is a source of information which has been gathered primarily 
uh, essentially from primary oblique secondary source. So when we talk about tertiary source, what we mean is that sometimes what happens is you have to get information and data both from primary and primary secondary sources. So in those cases, when data is gathered from primary oblique to secondary sources and then used for a certain uh, purpose, then in those cases, this form of data is termed as what is called tertiary data. Now, examples of tertiary data include, if I put it this way, sometimes when you read a book and you read bibliography or you see references, you go to databases to search for something, you look at a dictionary, encyclopedia, or you look at timelines. You know, sometimes when you look at reports, which are published reports, and at some stage, these published reports would give you certain timelines of how the events have occurred. Then in this case, what tends to happen is you are actually get, gathering the data from a combination of primary and secondary source. And that is why it is called tertiary data. So if I look at a dictionary and that dictionary, if I look at in terms of finding out a meaning of the word, then that form of data that I'm looking at is a tertiary source, simply because this particular source of data would have been published by Oxford or by say um, a different publisher, Merian, Merian Webster Dictionary. They would have compiled meanings and, you know, types and various different types of meanings of the words. And what they would have done is they would have published an edition of 2020, 2021, 2022, and an updated version in 2023. So if I get a 2023 version of the dictionary, I have a latest version of the dictionary, but the text and the word, say, for example, the meaning of the word uh, example, what does example mean? That would have been compiled somewhere in the 19, you know, 100 century or maybe 200 years back. And the meaning of the word would have been then approved by, uh, you know, various organizations. And then it would have been approved to get into the dictionary. So every year, there are lots of new words which are introduced into the dictionary. There's a set committee or a uh, consortium which basically looks at the usability of these words and they approve the inclusion of those words into the dictionary. But they would have been created somewhere hundreds of years back, some words in the dictionary. And slowly and gradually, this dictionary has become a mammoth dictionary of maybe God knows millions and maybe even billions of different types of words. But because it's a combination of primary data, when the word was coined, and then the meaning was approved, and then now it is published on paper, and you are accessing it as a third person, that is why this would become, you know, uh, a tertiary data. A good example of secondary data, you know, in terms of uh, examples of secondary data would be when you try and look at, you know, talking about, for example, government population census, you know, if I look at how the government actually looks at doing a population census every 10 years, and then the census data is published and made available to the members of public, you would see that data as secondary data. Because when the government was doing the census to look at what is the increase in the population, what is the breakup of gender, male, females, things like that, they do lots of different analysis on that data collected. If the data was collected on a particular day and it was analyzed on that day, then it will become primary data. But because census data is made available after approximately, you know, 10 years, then in those cases, that data becomes, you know, secondary data. So examples of secondary data could also mean include, say, for example, your tax records. You know, companies file their tax record after the financial year is over. So it's a secondary data. When we look at census data, you know, data on population, or if you look at electoral data, elections have happened and, you know, the data has been published that so-and-so is the winner of the elections. When you look at health records, you know, you were diagnosed with fever or with COVID, but over a point in time, this condition is improved. And that record, if it's being accessed from the computer by, a, by your GP, is basically at past data. So it is, you know, secondary data. If I look at books, Journals, sometimes we maintain our personal journals and we write events in that journal, which are predominantly significant events in our life, in our life. Then in those cases, you know, this data in books and journals tends to be secondary data. What are, what is primary data? 
examples of primary data can anybody think of examples of primary data any idea in examples of primary data uh, no no idea surveys surveys yes absolutely correct surveys very good so if we look at examples of primary data survey is for example you go to um, you say for example you go and shop at primark or h&m or zara and on 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 that day there is uh, a team which is collecting some feedback and questionnaires they're handing out some feedback questionnaires to you and they request you can you complete this questionnaire and provide it to me so when you look at questionnaires or surveys as somebody said you know they would be collecting data from the person or the uh, individual first hand and that is why this data would be primary data when i talk about letters you write a letter to your father and he receives it you write a letter to your friend personal first time because you are sending the letter to the person he receives it and you are basically looking at primary data you could also look at interviews if a television interview is happening is happening live and you're watching that interview recorded interview then it becomes secondary but if you are present at the time when the interview is happening that will become primary data autobiography you know if when you look at autobiography biography somebody who's writing an autobiography of a person and because he's compiling these series of events first hand by speaking to that person and writing it in detail at that stage autobiography or the data being collected is basically primary data you look at other aspects of it like if you are going to give a speech or if your boss or your manager sends a memo via email to the people in the office first thing in the morning those things that you are receiving first hand is going to be primary data one other example that i would put here would be if you see original artwork right some of us have seen you know famous paintings like the picasso or uh, you know if you have seen any paintings from leonardo da vinci one of the important you know banksy you know i don't know whether you've heard about banksy or not but one of the uh, you know modern the artists that we have you know in the uk is banksy and he creates a lot of murals and artworks across the city now if you see that artwork first hand you've seen a picture being created or a painting being done and you are there and the painting is being completed then you are actually seeing the original artwork but if a replica or a copy of that painting is being created by another artist and then it is being sold if it is being mass produced in the factory and a copy of that picasso is being sold and you buy it from wh smith or you buy it from any other store and you put it in your own house then or in a hotel if you see it if it is not original artwork that means created by the painter themselves first hand then it is not going to be primary data anything which is created first hand created by the painter themselves is basically going to be classed as what is called primary data so is the meaning and differentiation between primary secondary and tertiary data clear is this clear now okay now what we want to do is before i get into anything else what i want to do is primarily show you a few slides and what i want to do in these slides is ask you to identify what kind of uh, um, uh, you know data is being shown on this slide is it primary is it secondary is it tertiary so what you see on your side right now is you know a picture which depicts clocks and time so is this primary data is this secondary it is like a picture is it primary secondary or tertiary you can unmute your microphones and obviously what we want to do is do a quick slide show to see and recognize now understand the three different types of data primary secondary and tertiary this picture that you see is it primary secondary or tertiary tertiary okay and what i would say is also give me a reason why do you think it is tertiary
because I seen first time. Okay, so if I go back to the definition of tertiary, what was definition of tertiary? Definition of tertiary was that if it is a combination of primary and secondary data. So what we see as of now here is what is called, uh, uh, you know, say for example, a picture. And that picture essentially is showing time. So this would be something that you are seeing maybe on a wall, or you see this as a picture on a wall. Ambrose, could you switch your microphone off because you're not able to communicate and there is some problem with your microphone. So in this case, what you are basically seeing is the um, you know picture firsthand and it is on a wall. So this will be classed as what is called primary data because it is showing you time. Time is always primary. Is that okay? So this is primary. Let's look at another picture. This is a cover of a book. So Melissa Muller's biography. So this is, imagine you're buying a book from WH Smith and this is a cover of a book. So what does book constitute or a novel constitute? Is this primary, secondary? For me, this one is secondary. That From is Ambrose. correct. Secondary. Why is it secondary, Ambrose? It's secondary because not everybody can afford education. Correct. So somebody who has written the biography of Anne Frank would be the author who has collected all the facts from her firsthand, and he would have been primary source. But because now he's compiled all the details of the author uh, and Anne Frank and then published it as a book, and because we are looking at it as a, as a buying it as a book, and this is, we are going to read into somebody else's narration, that is why this data is going to be, or this book is going to be secondary source. Let's look at another one. This is an example of a classified ad word. So pay attention on the date and where is it published. Classified ad word. Sometimes when you buy a newspaper, you see classified ad words, garage sale, this and that. You know. So what kind of data is this? A classified ad word that you pick up in the newspaper. Is it primary or secondary? So this is going to be primary because you are picking up a newspaper and you're seeing the advert yourself firsthand. That is why this is primary, uh, you know, considered primary. Let's look at another one. This is a poster or what is called an almanac. So what is this showing and what kind of data is this? How many of you know what is an almanac? Almanac is an annual calendar. You know, it's a calendar which companies publish and distribute it free along with, uh, you know, products that they sell sometimes at the start of the year. So this is a calendar which primary, primarily has been created by what is called Boston Daily Advertiser, maybe a newspaper. And this is a calendar, annual calendar, which has important dates and other bits on it. And it was published in 1875. So is it tertiary data, primary data, or secondary data? OK, this can be two different types. This can be tertiary, because if we consider the date, 1875, it is a good you know, 150 years back. And if you pick it up, as you can see, the print is quite pale in color. So that means it's an archive that you are picking up and you are looking at the almanac for 1875, important dates which were published or important events, information on the important events which was published at that point in time. And you are maybe picking it up from a library for reading. Then in that case, I will treat this as tertiary data because it was published in 1875. Then over the years, you know, copies of it have been archived in the library. And then I'm picking it up to see and read bits and pieces of it, I'm going to be looking at it as a tertiary source. It can also be classified as a primary source. Why? If I was born and I was present in 1875 and I had bought uh, or got this calendar firsthand, 
and I've, I would have used it for the year 1875, then in those cases, I would have termed this as a primary source because I'm living in the year 1875. I'm using the calendar wherein it is talking or giving us important dates, events which are going to happen throughout the year. And in that case, because I'm using it, I'm using it firsthand, it would be termed as primary data. So depending on how you look at it, if I look at it as an archive, that means it's been pulled out from an archive in library or other bits, then I would say tertiary. But if I was on present on, on that day when the almanac was being distributed, then it would have been primary. Let's look at another image. Now, this is, again, a novel or a book. But in this case, this is not a biography. This is Anne Frank's novel that she has written. And you are looking at buying or, you know, looking at choosing this book to read or assuming you're buying this book at W. H. Smith. Whether this will be primary data or secondary data, this is not an autobiography. What kind of data will this be? So if I'm buying this firsthand as a book from W. H. Smith or from a reseller, then this data will be, or this would provide me primary data because I'm reading the book, I'm buying it for reading it first time. But if I was buying the book from uh, someplace, uh, maybe as a used version, and I was aware that I've read this book, but I still want to have it in my library, then in that case, that would have become secondary data. Let's look at another one. So this is a graph showing, uh, imagine this is a graph on a TV monitor. It is showing you uh, bits of how the inflation is rising across the year. So sometimes on television channels or news channels, or if you go to the stock exchange, you see graphs showing the performance of shares. And you're seeing it live yourself in the television as it is being uh, presented. Will it be primary data, secondary data, or tertiary data? So this will be classed, if you're seeing the graph live, as I mentioned on TV, then it will be primary data. But if you see this graph as a picture in a slide, like I'm showing in a slideshow, then this would constitute what is called secondary data because you're not seeing it live. And if you look at this as a part of a deck of slides as a presentation and you uh, are, are going to visit, revisit my session recording later today or in a couple of days, then this could also be termed as tertiary data because you are not watching it firsthand. It is in the past, like 2010, you are not watching or seeing or present at the presentation that I'm giving right now. So that becomes secondary. But when you see it later by reviewing the recording of this session, then in those cases, it will become tertiary. Let's look at one or two last examples. This is a book which talks about the history of television. It will be primary or secondary. So pay attention on the word. The reason why I've chosen these slides or put these pictures across, you have to pay attention on time, the words. So this says history. And because it says history of television, this will be secondary data. Let's look at a website. Now, this website is a website which basically publishes Hollywood pictures and reviews of Hollywood picture news. What is this website uh, showing? Uh, is it data which is primary or secondary? So it is secondary. showing some reviews of pictures. What is what is the reviews of pictures mean? Is it primary or secondary? Secondary. That is correct. Secondary. Why is it secondary? Because it's not a present. It's a, it's a sorry. It's a past. It's gone. Reviews you're reading. Obviously, it's a it's like a history. That is correct. So part of your answer is correct because what you have said is it's a review. So that means somebody has gone in and seen the picture or the movie and then written a review. So the review being written on a website is after seeing the movie. And that is why this data is secondary. Good. So let's look at one or two more. Now, these are a bunch of newspapers. Is it primary, secondary or tertiary? That's depend. Are you reading from yesterday news or today one? Excellent answer. So one thing that you have to spot in the data that I'm showing is if you look at the dates 
uh, very carefully. So if you're looking at an archive of newspapers from a library or someplace, then this will be tertiary because it's a it is it is a, it's an information that you're referring to in the past and that is why it will be tertiary primary if i pick up the newspaper today it has all the news which has been published and i'm reading it first hand and it is of today's date then it will become primary but if it is a date in the past and i'm picking it up like it was yesterday's newspaper and i bought it today then in that case the data would be secondary so this source when i say newspaper can be classified as secondary tertiary or primary depending on what date and time you pick it up on how you are picking it up on and where you are seeing it would be then the classification or data let's look at one or two last last examples so this is similar to the newspaper this is a magazine that you are seeing so there is a current edition a current monthly edition and you are able to see a magazine so is it primary or secondary So this again, the logic remaining the same. It can be primary if it is in the month. If I, for example, we are in June. If you pick up a June edition and entire June, the month uh, of entire month of June, the edition would remain primary because it's first hand. Your the news is still uh, you know not uh, all outdated or obsolete, and it is something which is for the current month. But if I pick up a magazine which is for the May edition or April edition, then it will become secondary because it is data or magazine or a newer edition of that is already published and the previous edition becomes secondary. Now, this is a hand signed autograph uh, by somebody on an American airline flight. So is this primary, secondary? Handwritten autograph. So because this is written by somebody and it is hand uh, you know this is a this is basically written by elvis presley the famous singer from the beatles so he's saying dear mr president first i would like to introduce myself i am elvis presley and, and and i admire your great and i have admire you and i have great respect for your work so he has written this handwritten note to john f kennedy when both of them were in the same flight and obviously, this is a first hand written uh, uh, note that we are seeing. So that is why it is primary. Okay. Now, what we've been able to see with some of these images is that we've been able to see and understand what are primary sources of material, what are secondary sources, and what are tertiary sources. Primary sources are essentially original material, first hand that you collect information. Secondary sources are accounts written after the event has happened, after somebody has seen the event, witnessed the event, or with a bit of hindsight, now that you have this information, you would have gone about doing things differently. Then it is secondary sources of data. And tertiary is a combination of primary and secondary. When the data has been moved around, changed, compiled, analyzed, you know, uh, further, further analyzed, and then it is published, and then you are picking it up from journals, books, articles, and then using it to further process for your uh, information, then in that case, distilled data or data which has already been used and published elsewhere being used again for your own uh, benefits or for your own research would be classed as tertiary data. In short, combination of primary and secondary data. Now, in this particular learning outcome, we are looking at covering these three assessment criteria. So the first one that we want to look at is understanding what are, what is primary research. Now, primary research, as I mentioned to you, is research that you do firsthand. You go and collect information firsthand. And in this case, the tools that you use to do primary research are going to be using questionnaires, looking at observations that we do. Sometimes you see scientists doing tests like during the COVID-19 vaccine, the vaccine was tested in the laboratory. It, there were a number of tests and the proteins were tested. Again, the formula was changed. Again, it was tested. So somebody conducting those experiments and making those observations at that point in time is, is primary data. Sometimes you are in, on the road and you're traveling and you see highway engineers you know, using equipment to look at measuring distances, distances between poles or different sides of the roads, things like that. They are making real-time observations. 
you see a weather forecaster and a weather forecaster out and about in the field making an observation whether it's going to drain or they are checking the instruments to see how the weather is going to be they are making real time observations and that is why the data is going to be primary if i interview somebody if i send a survey to somebody if i speak to somebody on the phone if i do a focus group interview that means i get a couple of people together in a room and give them some questions or ask them some questions these are all going to be what are called primary sources of data and when we collect this data first hand we are actually conducting and getting hold of information first hand and that is classed as what is called primary research now if i look at um you know essentially uh, say for example sorry if, sorry to disturb yeah, you i got a question yeah, it's go like on. a it's a past past and present i wouldn't say past the words are i wouldn't say literally past and present but yes in some way or the other you can actually look at that as a terminology to say if something is happening in present times then it will be primary data if something is already okay i got, I got, I got, I got a question the primary word i can use it as a present like going on i can see and uh, a secondary is like it's been happened correct yes in a way yes you oh, can see. that's fine that's why i was a bit confused in the words like uh, you know what i mean Yes, no, no, that's fine. That that is a way where you Thank can you classify. Thank you. Classify. Now there yes. are various okay. ways through which you can use and do primary research, and there are various ways through which you can do secondary research. So there are differences. Why sometimes when you have to investigate or research and look at problems in terms of finding out why this issue is happening or why this problem occurs or reoccurs, then in those cases when you carry out investigation, we normally carry out investigation. by looking at choosing an appropriate method of study and the reason why we choose those methods it could be based on various reason, uh, you know reasons one reason is to collect primary data it is quite expensive and time consuming so for example when you look at government starting a census on population to measure what is the population of the uk why do you think they do this exercise once in 10 years in most countries the census happens once in 10 years is because this is a time consuming very expensive pains taking work they have to create volunteers or people who will go across to every door knock on it then you understand how many people are living in the family or in that house how many of them are male female what age group they are and this process of collecting data is quite cumbersome and time consuming it is obviously very expensive so sometimes when we look at undertaking primary research we differentiate between primary and secondary research also by choosing in a way to try and look at what are the resources available for research and how much time effort and money or quality of result is required and that is sometimes used as a parameter to select which uh, type of research uh, we are going to undertake so when we look at talking about primary and secondary research in general we look at differentiating them from a point of view of looking at uh, time cost effort and quality so sometimes primary research is required like if you witness an accident and if the parameters of that accident have to be established that why it happened and whose negligence was it or who was responsible uh, then in those cases you have to go about asking a couple of people and you have to find out in detail why that happened and in order to avoid it the government would look at maybe doing or the local council would look at doing other further analysis to say is this a busy road how many cars pass by this road every hour you know are there enough zebra crossings do we need to have pedestrian crossing on this road is it in a built up area they'll start putting in a lot of parameters to try and read and understand and avoid accidents happening on that site now if there are six or seven fatalities which have happened already in a year it basically would start that process and this means that the government or the local authority would need to look at collecting primary data they'll speak to the residents to find out what is the noise level they will see and measure the number of cars pass passing that road and all this will have to be done first hand it can't be that they can look at some sort of a data which has been collected in the past and then base their findings on it to say okay we are going to install traffic lights in this area make more zebra crossings or create a pedestrian subway but all these things would require collecting information first hand and that is why this sometimes is termed as time consuming uh, it requires lots of efforts and it is something which you know happens over a, over a period of time 
when we look at secondary research now assuming if that data is already available for a particular road and what the government or local authority is doing is that it was data collected five years back but now the things have changed the number of cars have increased the you know number of houses on that road have increased because of new developments and the number of fatalities are also rising so in this case the local council would dip into the past data which has been available which has been already collected and then do further analysis to see whether they need to look at making more changes or introducing more changes on that busy road like in manchester princess parkway road for example is quite busy in the mornings and in the evenings during office hours now at one point in time the local council and the authorities were looking at making this a toll road so if you travel through this road you pay a toll every day and would that make any difference they did a bit of a pilot they looked at increasing the number of traffic lights zebra crossings or uh, in some places they also installed cameras to slow the speed down and every few years they monitor the traffic on this road but because they have existing data available sometimes they would not they would be making it easier for themselves to basically look at making those changes by looking at past data and because it is available it has already been collected in the past that is why maybe doing some additional research or maybe installing additional traffic lights or making decisions to streamline the traffic on the road would be easier if they do it through the secondary data route and that would be less time consuming and in some cases uh, you know less costly or expensive and that is why you look at doing secondary investigation through secondary sources so this bit becomes important sometimes when you look at doing or undertaking investigation or investigative studies and when you do that the idea is you need to be able to choose an appropriate method through which you're going to carry out these activities and depending on time resources money and the output which is required in terms of quality of output that is required you differentiate between choosing primary and secondary type of research secondary research is also called desk based research that means you are going to be looking at doing or let's say in doing or conducting investigation by looking at sources through the sources of data which are already present things like government statistics you know agency data which has been published by research agencies websites journals existing data which has been published in other sources like books or census data and because you are using existing data to do your research or to compile further filter and combine and you know distill to further information then in those cases this type of research would be secondary research it is faster is generally quicker and it is less time consuming and requires less resources and that's why sometimes people prefer to do the secondary research now in research because what we are looking at doing is understanding what are the primary tools uh, when you conduct research through primary sources what are the tools which are required so what i've done is i've given out some examples in the slide to basically ensure that you are aware that how a questionnaire is designed what multiple choice questions and you know these bits have been given here just to give you an example of how you know sometimes you use these tools and techniques to uh, undertake primary research and when we look at secondary research at some stage what we look at is look at going into sources which are going to be books articles journals existing research reports or data which has been published uh, by say for example agencies and that would help us you know cover and understand uh, the secondary sources and choose secondary research as a medium to conduct investigation now that brings us to the end of uh, you know what is called um, you know this particular learning outcome which focuses on you know understanding how research information how research is done how research information is compiled and you know what are the various sources of or methods through which we can undertake research primary and secondary so i hope this session has been useful any questions at this stage any questions anybody 
Yes, I got a question. If, for example, if uh, I'm doing business study and yes. I'm collecting the data, like, for example, I'm collecting from net, collecting from the uh, people's sources or any other sources, and if I'm presenting that, if that's going to be a primary or that's going to be a secondary? So if you look at what you mentioned, you mentioned if you're collecting data from the web, the moment you say you're collecting yeah. data from the web, that becomes secondary that's source be a secondary. that is already published. Okay. And if you say you're collecting okay. data from friends or through questionnaires, that becomes primary uh, research. Sometimes when you conduct research activities, you also do what is called mixed method. That means you use both primary and secondary methods to collect data and then do your research. So Definitely. that can also okay. be done. That can also be done. So you have to be clear in terms of when you go about conducting research, if you are conducting research and that research is primarily happening through primary sources, sources like focus groups, surveys, interviews, group discussions, one-on-one -on -one meetings, or by using, say, for example, a questionnaire which has been sent across on Facebook or through Google Forms, then in those cases, your data is going to be primary. Your method is going to be primary research because you're collecting information firsthand. But if you use websites, if you use articles or existing research data, which is available from agencies like government websites, you're using internet, yeah. you're using newspapers, then in those cases, that form of research is going to be secondary research secondary. because you're using existing data published, but you're compiling it from different sources. It will be classed as secondary research. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Good stuff. So we'll end this session here today and hopefully we'll catch up next week on Monday and Tuesday to discuss learning outcome three and learning outcome four for the same unit. So this presentation and this session is available on YouTube and on Moodle and you'll be able to you know, go through this in a bit more detail um, after this. And if you think of any questions, any queries, then we'll be doing a recap next week before we start the next learning outcome. I'll be more than happy to take your questions. Till then, thanks for joining today.